with KP. It's been a long time. We got a lot to talk about. It's been a great weekend of sports so far. It's been a great weekend for college football. A lot of things going on. How are you guys doing out there? How's everybody doing? Did everybody have a good holiday weekend? Enjoy their Thanksgiving? Get to spend that good time with family and friends and loved ones or, you know, got to chill by yourself. Just spend some quality time alone. Whatever you did over this time, I hope you got to have a little bit of time off of work or whatever your hustle is and uh, we're able to just kick back a little bit and relax and hopefully, with any luck, you were able to get on and uh, watch some of that college football that was played yesterday and some of that Thanksgiving Day football that was played the other day as we've had some uh, very good football being played. We're going to talk mostly about football today. We'll hit some other stories here in the head when we talk about headlines, of course. You know, there's some good stuff going on in the NBA. You got more stories coming out about Mr. Conor McGregor. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's good. It's the last Sunday of November. Uh, 2016 is almost over. It's very hard to believe this year's gone by very fast for me. I don't know about you guys, but uh, it's been a a whirlwind of a year. We're in the second half of the NFL season. That's amazing as well. You wait so long for it to come around, it seems like, and now we're getting ready to wrap up the final quarter here of the regular season, heading into the playoff stretch. You know, you're going to see teams start making moves, doing things. Uh, We already got mock drafts coming out. So, you know, hey, it is what it is. 2016's wrapping up. November's over. Thanksgiving's done. You guys, you know, some people out there are putting up their Christmas decorations and stuff already. Uh, Getting that shopping going from the Black Friday and tomorrow Cyber Monday and yesterday was Small Store Saturday. You got to love all these little marketing gimmicks they come up with for us out there. Um, But if you got a sports lover in your family, go ahead and try and get them some tickets some apparel, some swag, you know, get them something unique that they'll, that they'll like to have on the shelf or wear around and show that team pride, you know. All right, <clears throat> let's get into it. College football, we're going to hit that first. We'll hit the NFL. and Like I said, we'll get into some headlines too. Um, but yesterday, a lot of games yesterday, a lot of games Friday, um, deciding college football playoff placement for this week possibly um some up other upsets that also took place this weekend um but starting with friday's action washington went out and did exactly what i thought washington was going to do handling washington state in the apple cup uh they won that one 45 17 over that in-state rival there and really they just jumped on them early enough that the cougars weren't able to come back uh they they never found that rhythm. Uh, they were kind of in a hustle the whole time. And uh, Washington set themselves up as the Pac-12 North championship champion with that win and moved on to the Pac-12 championship, waiting the winner of the CU-Utah game that was going to be played on Saturday. Uh, upset to me, hey, this team is a specialist at it, apparently. Iowa's done it a couple weeks in a row or at least twice in the last three weeks. Uh, Now they upset Nebraska this week and really just put a whooping on them, knocking them off 40-10 to and taking away any hope they had of making it into a Big Ten championship game themselves. Air Force knocked off Boise State in an upset, 27-20. to Um, Pretty good season for Air Force overall, 9-3 record for them, you know, for uh, an academy school if you can get up to that level that's pretty good Boise State that's a big knock for them uh, they're at the end of their season they do finish 10 and 2 on a regular season so uh, upset nonetheless as Air Force was unranked Houston drops again Um, this is a team a lot of talent a lot of speed but they are so inconsistent Uh, that's why you saw them bouncing all over the rankings this year 
um, as they fall to Memphis now this week, 48-44, and you'll see them drop out of the top 25, and that'll hurt other teams' rankings also, I'm sure, that have wins over Houston um, as far as how their rankings play out. Um, That's Friday's action. Uh, Toledo, well, I guess Toledo also lost to uh, Western Michigan, who stays perfect on the season at 12 and 0 as they beat Toledo 55 to 35 on Friday. Now yesterday yesterday was the slate of big games. If you got to watch football yesterday, if you're a college football uh, aficionado, if you're a bandwagon fan, if you you know have anything to do with college football, yesterday you enjoyed watching as many games as you could. Uh, the, yesterday was pretty much the rivalry re- weekend. Um, this past weekend was. Now next weekend there are some rivalry matchups. Teams that did buys this week that have their game next week, like Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Um, but traditionally this is rivalry weekend. So you have some of the big games. You have the Iron Bowl. You have the Michigan-Ohio State game. You have um, the in-state rivalry with Clemson and South Carolina. Um, Colorado and Utah, technically they're trying to build it as a rivalry, but it's short-played at this point. You know, you had Louisville, Kentucky, Notre Dame, USC, Florida, Florida State, Tennessee, Vanderbilt. Uh, A lot of rivalry games yesterday, hence the title of the weekend. Um, We all know what the big marquee matchup was, the one that was being billed the most, that had the most excitement, um, had families and friends dividing themselves, telling jokes, and that's the Michigan-Ohio State game. Got all the billing, got all the press. It's the number two team, the number three team, deservingly so. It's not very often you get teams in the top five that get to play each other in the regular season. So, yes, it, it's, it's, it's an exciting game. <clears throat> um, this was a game that was much more needed for a win uh, for Michigan overall, I think, than it was for Ohio State. Because without this win, Michigan now, in my opinion, will drop out of the top four. They don't have the championship game to get back into the top four. So now they... So leaving them without a championship in the Big Ten and without a chance in the college football playoff. Whereas if they would have won this game, they're in the college football playoff, in my opinion, no matter what happens in the championship week because of the win over Ohio State. Ohio State also at that point would not have um, had the chance to stay in, I think, They might have dropped to the fourth team this week. I don't think they would have dropped out with a loss from those top four teams. And they still would have had a chance, depending on the results of the later game, to make it into that Big Ten game. Championship game. If Penn State had come up short against Michigan State. So, there was a lot on the line for this game. It was a big game. It was an exciting game. It was... Two matchup, three um, long standing rivalry. Uh, you know, this one goes back into the 1800s, I believe, like 1897 or something like that. Uh, this is a, a, a really old rivalry. It's one that I always liked watching growing up. And both these programs always have a lot of talent that goes to the NFL. So if you follow these teams even a little bit, you see these guys grow and continue on, and you know who they are as they go through the league. And there's a lot of players that played yesterday that are going to be in that situation or be given the opportunity to be in that situation. And Ohio State pulled it out. What can I say? I'm just going to jump right to it. They pull it out in double overtime. They made the plays necessary at the end of the game. And they win 30-27 to in what was a very um, back-and-forth type of game, really. Michigan looked like the better team for the first quarter and a half. Then they kind of leveled out. Ohio State didn't really have anything going, but you could see they were, they were fighting, they were scratching. And really, Ohio State kept it close at 17-7 to at halftime. Michigan probably should have been up 24-7, 20, you know, somewhere in there, maybe 20-7. to 
They left some points out there. Ohio State left some points out there. Missed field goals. And all this talk about the refereeing, yeah, there's some questionable calls. You could argue it either way, depending on what side you're on, and have a solid argument. And the thing with the replay, and everybody has to understand that, it's not what you think is definitive proof. That official has to be able to go, okay, I can clearly see this, and in my review that dictates my job, I can say, look, I, this is what I see, this is why I called it, here's the rule that I used in my judgment. And that fourth down call, I'll tell you what, personally, yes, I believe the ball was just short of the yard marker, which would have been an interesting measurement at that point. But once you put it on the yard marker, of course, yeah, that's first down. And at that point, you got the defense rattled. They're not focused. You come with your quick guy who you've been trying to get off all day. Big play happens, score, there you go. They made the plays that needed to happen. The play calling for Ohio State at the end of the fourth quarter and in both overtimes was amazing. It was like watching somebody play Madden against their little brother who hadn't played before. All the holes just opened up, nobody touched anybody, and you just got these you know, easy, easy looking scores. So congratulations to Ohio State. Uh, you very well might find yourself in the running for a national title without actually being the Big Ten champion. You know, that's a feat. That's something to uh, respect. Urban Meyer now hasn't lost to Michigan. Uh, Michigan hasn't won, but I think maybe twice in the last a 16 matchups or something like that now so right now Michigan's the little brother in Ohio State saying okay you just stay right where you at you stay up north we'll stay here we're gonna keep doing our thing and you can take all your hype and your Jordans and uh, we'll continue to roll and do our thing and hey they did they came out in the second half they continued to do what they were doing JT Barrett can continue to run uh, I don't see his skill set transferring to the NFL really at all uh, unless he decides to play a new position or really can just excel at being taught the quarterback position a little bit better. Um, but athletic kid, strong arm, uh, good decision maker. And uh, Ohio State, they fought as a team yesterday. They really didn't have any one standout other than JT Barrett running the ball, which was a little remarkable that Michigan's defense – they must have been tired in the second half. That's my really only explanation. Because um, when they would cycle in a new set of pass rushers, they would make a big play. Um, but then they would get gashed. And some of those back-end guys where they don't have as much depth uh, ended up getting tired. And then once the offensive line of Ohio State kind of picked it up a little bit, you started seeing that pass rush not make as many uh, effective plays or bat down as many balls anymore either. So yeah, congratulations to the Buckeyes. Um, Alabama and Auburn. Alabama is Alabama. They are clearly the number one team in the country um, without a shadow of a doubt as they roll over Auburn and that strong defense the Tigers have and put up 30 points on them and hold them to just 12, point, hard, 12 hard fought points. No scores, all field goals for the Tigers yesterday. Um, I don't know what to say about Alabama. I think there's a chance that this team um, could at least win a game if they were an NFL team. You always hear that argument that, oh, the national champion college team used to hear about the Hurricanes all the time, Miami, that uh, they could beat some of the NFL teams. Like when the Lions went 0-16, everybody thought Miami could beat Detroit. <clears throat> it's a different level. Um, one, you don't get to take your 90-man roster to go be part of the game. Uh, you only get to take 53 of your guys. And those 53 guys aren't all going to be guys who would, make it, would have made it on an NFL roster. So you're automatically limited already. It's a silly argument. But this Alabama team, 
I think they could at least win one game if they were in it. 